When it comes to shooting street photography, one question that comes up over and over again is which camera or lens should I get? Photographers are obsessed about gear and probably spend too much energy into picking the right tool that gets the job done. And I'm guilty of doing that too. On the other hand, you probably know the saying that it's the photographer that takes the photo, not the camera. Because without a certain skill set, even the best camera in the world will not help you to get good shots. And that camera doesn't even exist. Let's put it this way, choosing the right gear will increase the likelihood of you taking the shots that you are after, or at least makes things easier for you. But now, what is the right camera for you? Well, it's this one here. No guys, it's not that easy, is it? I worked out a list of features that I would consider important for street photography and that list might help you to decide which camera to get for 2023 and probably for the years to come. It's not so much about the brand or specific model, it's rather about a specific set of features that will work for you and this list will help you to narrow it down to maybe a few options. This is mainly tailored towards digital cameras, but some of the things discussed in the video also apply to film cameras. Let's start with the first point and that is already a big one. Focal length. First of all, it's very helpful to have a good understanding about which focal length you want to shoot. I'm a big advocate of picking one focal length and sticking to it. For me, as you might know, I prefer to shoot 28mm and it's my preferred focal length since 8 years when I picked up the original Leica Q back in 2015. That focal length became muscle memory and every time I try something else, it messes with my head and it's just confusing and I go right back to 28mm. I think in the long run it's beneficial to stick to one focal length and master that. So how does that help you picking a camera? Well, if your focal length is rather 50mm, then certain cameras are not for you and especially cameras with a fixed lens, like a Fuji X100 series camera, Sony RX1, Leica Q and so on and so forth. Maybe you could live with a Ricoh GR3X and its 40mm equivalent lens. Other than that, a DSLR, a mirrorless camera or even a Leica M would be perfect for you. But if you shoot 28 or you like to shoot 28 or 35, of course, there's plenty more options available then. Viewfinder. When it comes to the viewfinder, some people don't care because they use the back screen rather than the viewfinder to shoot. On the other hand, some people are diehard OVF advocates and they need to have an optical viewfinder which narrows down the selection to a DSLR, a Leica M and a Fuji X100 or X Pro series. Size and weight. For traveling and shooting street, I prefer cameras that are not too big and heavy that I can carry around all day long without getting fatigued. That's why I prefer cameras with a fixed lens because those are usually rather compact and somewhat small. But also some mirrorless cameras with a compact lens fall into that category. But honestly, nothing beats a Ricoh GR when it comes to size and weight. This isn't a Ricoh GR, but it's roughly the same size and in comparison, even the Leica Q looks fairly big. Flash. Do you use flash or you want to use flash? If that is something you are interested in, then choosing a camera can have a big impact, especially when using flash in the daytime. For this type of application, well, a camera with a leaf shutter that means with a shutter that is built into the lens should be considered. I don't want to get into too much detail here, but it helps you to get away with a small and compact flash like this one here and to me, that is a huge advantage. Cameras that fall into that category are the Leica Q series, the Fuji X100, and I think also the old Fuji X70. I'm not sure if it has a, a, a flash hot shoe, but if it does, it's one of those cameras. Then the Sony RX100 series, um, it has a zoom lens, so I would not recommend that, but in theory, it has a leaf shutter, so you could use flash, because some have a, um, a hot shoe. Then the Ricoh GR series, and Ah, the Sony RX1 and also the Hasselblad X1D and the X2D. They have leaf shutter lenses, so it's pretty handy to have this because, like I said, you can use a very small flash and that is very handy to have. 
Yes, I know, together with a Leica M, these cameras are really expensive and of course not for everyone, but there's leaf shutter cameras that are much cheaper, like the Ricoh GR or a Fuji X70, X100. There's basically an option for almost everyone. Shutter noise. It can be very beneficial if you have a camera that is not noisy when you take a shot, especially when you do street photography and it's in a very quiet environment. You probably know that, that a big chunky DSLR with a very loud shutter will draw a lot of attention towards you and that's not what you want. So I think a camera with a leaf shutter as again is probably a very good choice. But also cameras uh, like the Sony A9 or other cameras that have a good electronic shutter that doesn't suffer from any bending or um, rolling shutter. They also might be a good option if you want a camera that is very quiet when shooting. And you might think, what about autofocus and high ISO, ISO performance and so on and so forth? Well, let me tell you, I've been shooting street for over a decade now and those things are not really that important for shooting street. Because let's face it, for street, most of the time it's better if you use manual focus, zone focusing, even at night when you use a flash, you can do that, no problem. And when it comes to autofocus and high ISO, pretty much all modern cameras are as good as it gets and there's nothing else you need. Uh, and don't be afraid to shoot high ISO because a little bit of noise doesn't destroy an image. Sometimes a little bit of texture can add to the image. If it's too clean, sometimes it gets too boring. I mean, I shoot film, so I'm not scared about noise and stuff like that. And neither should you. One thing that comes up from time to time is weather sealing especially when people compare the OG Q to the Q2, because the original one has none. To me, that doesn't matter at all. Over the past years, I've shot many cameras without weather sealing and a little bit of rain has never been a problem. And in case it gets really wet, there's other ways to protect your camera. Yes, I've heard from someone that his Leica Q died because of water damage, but he accidentally dumped it into the sea and that shouldn't be a surprise then. So basically weather sealing is nice to have, but it would not hold me back from getting a camera if it's not weather sealed. Those points I gave you are in my opinion the ones to consider when choosing a camera for street photography. Simply make some sort of tier list and decide from there. For me, it would look like this. So most importantly, focal length. I prefer shooting 28, so that's very important to me. I like to use flash, so yeah, also very important. Size and weight, yes, both matter. And also, a camera that is rather silent is definitely preferred. Viewfinder, uh, it's not super important. I could, live, I could live with just using the screen, but it's nice to have. So this basically would give me two options that work for me, a Leica Q or a Ricoh GR. Now for you, it might look like this. Preferred focal length, 50 mil. Uh, optical viewfinder is preferred. Size and weight matters, but not super important. Shutter noise, not super relevant. Flash, uh, not so important. In this case, an APS-C camera like the Fuji x Pro 3, maybe for instance, might be the way to go because you can uh, attach a lens that gives you the 50 mil equivalent. Also, you have the optical viewfinder. It's pretty lightweight, especially if you uh, use a small lens. If your budget allows it, there might also be the option to go for a Leica M system. This would also pretty much fit your needs. Now let's give you a third variation here. Focal length, 35 mil. Size and weight, super important. Viewfinder, nice to have, but EVF is okay. Shutter noise, not super relevant. Flash, uh, not so relevant. Options here would be the Fuji X100, maybe Fuji X-E4 with a small lens or even a micro four thirds camera like an Olympus OM5 with a small prime lens. The Sony RX1, if you can find one, which would also be an option or even a Leica Q2 because it has 47 megapixels and if you crop a little bit, it roughly brings you to uh, your preferred 35 mil. If you're now on the market uh, for a new camera for street photography, well, there you have it. Just go through the steps that I just showed you or the uh, features and look how important are they to you. And then maybe it narrows it down to a few options and you don't stand there and there's like hundreds of cameras or dozens of cameras you can choose from. 
uh, because this boils it down maybe to a handful and makes things easier to decide and also maybe your budget is a factor that might help you to decide which camera to get. Okay, there you have it guys. And also if you already own your perfect camera, maybe in the comments, go through the list I gave you and maybe let me know uh, which is the preferred focal length, flash, yes or no, weight and size, doesn't matter or not, OVF, EVF, and also when it comes to uh, shutter noise, if that's important to you. So maybe go through there and see if your camera that you consider to be your perfect camera maybe is your perfect camera or maybe there's even the better one for that. All right, guys, that's it uh, for today's video. I hope you liked today's episode. And as always, guys, if you do so, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And we will see each other very soon in the next one. Until then, auf Wiedersehen.